and welcome to Seeing Through Glass. Welcome to Liechtenstein. Uh, if you don't know about Liechtenstein, it's a tiny little nation in between Switzerland and Austria. I drove here yesterday after spending a weekend in Italy attending Ferrari's Finale Mondiale. If you haven't seen those videos, go back and check them out because it was an incredible event. However, I am aware that recently content's been a little bit Ferrari heavy. So today, I'm gonna change that. I'm on my way to check out two insanely rare and very special Lamborghinis. I have to say, Liechtenstein is stunning. I don't think I've been here before. I don't really remember visiting Liechtenstein before, but look at that backdrop. It's beautiful, as are these two cars. Now, if you're new to this channel, welcome. My name is Sam, and I am, well, yes, Ferrari obsessed. I do dabble in a bit of Porsche, but my heart really only beats for Ferrari. However, recently, I've been coming around to Lamborghinis. Not something which really you would have ever heard me say on this channel three or four years ago, but last year I admitted there was one Lamborghini that I actually kind of wanted to go and buy. It was the Mark I Gallardo Superleggera. And then again last year, I got a chance to experience the Murcielago SV and it kind of blew my mind. And so, yes, yeah, suddenly within this heart that's kind of filled with the prancing horse, I've allowed a little space for modern classic Lamborghinis. And as I teased at the beginning, of this video. These are two of the most rare and special modern classic Lambos you can find. You might be looking over my shoulder and going, well Sam, it's just a Mark I Garda Superleggera and an LP640, what's so special about that? Well, let me answer that question because both of these cars were fitted with manual gearboxes from factory. Only 10 Mark I Garda Superleggeras had the manual gearboxes selected and less than 50 LP640s, meaning that they're just super rare. I don't think many people knew you could get a Mark I Garda Superleggera with a manual gearbox. And look, there'll always be an argument to say like, how much is too much power when it comes to a manual gearbox? And heck, we're gonna find out in this video. But I always love to be more involved with that driving experience and the thought of two modern classic Lambos with three pedals and that manual gear selector. Oh, it excites me a lot. Oh my Lord. <laughs> no beautiful way to do this. Uh, everyone, meet Yannick from Gasoline Culture, the legend that has arranged hey guys. today's filming opportunity. I mean, dude, thank you so much for this. No problem. Happy to have you here. I'm a little bit intimidated. <laughs> I, could, I mean, it is an intimidating car from the outside, but yeah. I think you'll be surprised when you actually get around to driving it. I hope so. For some reason, it's a bit of a baptism by fire today, and I'm kicking things off with the Mercy, or the LP640. I mean... I kind of would have preferred to jump in the Super Sheriff first, but no, here we go in the Big Mammoth Beast. And it is just that. I feel, I don't know how to explain the feeling of sitting on one of these things. It's special. It's special. I mean, there's a lot going on in front of me, but even more going on behind the, the, me. The whole car is basically in the back. It's like, all you're back sitting there. over the front axle. The pedals are over here somewhere. Yeah. The steering wheel, and then it, oh, it's, just, it's nuts, but it's very exciting. And then yep. I always <laughs> Paul Wallace will be watching this screaming, it's on the right. Um, and then, yes, my good Lord, a six speed manual shifter. Is this going to be like terrifying? I don't think so. I think you, you think should it's just gonna get going. Right? Like people always think that these cars are, are crazy, but they're- well, actually, they are. Ah, they <laughs> are in a way, but yeah, I think you'll see. Okay, so fly off handbrake right there we yep. go that's there first gear supposedly and then find some kind of biting point where is it and we're away well done <laughs> we've started well <laughs> um oh my god i've forgotten how weird this driving experience is because i genuinely feel like i'm facing a really odd angle have you ever driven a bus uh, not yet, but I'm pretty sure that this is uh, this is a similar, similar experience. <laughs> Weirdly, I did for a filming thing years ago, because you sit over the wheels, when the car turns, or the bus turns, it's a really odd sensation, it's the right, same in right. this. Uh, now, we are going to be following a, a Mini today, lovely Mini Countryman, he's our sort of guide, uh, so that we kind of know where we're going, and uh, yeah, I don't know where we're going, so I'm a little bit sort of... <laughs> no worries, we're going in hesitant. the woods first. We're going in the woods, right, okay, so, I, I tell you what, straight away, this is all right. 
this is all right. I thought this was going to be far more terrifying and, and I'm actually changing gears and we're moving. So things aren't that bad. Now, from memory, and my memory is very bad, I don't think I've driven an LP640 before. I've, I've driven an SV. Right. And that was mind blowing, mate. I, like right. that changed my whole. Well, yeah, they're raw, they're aggressive, they're yes, cool, they're great. They're very cool. Um, so, how many have you driven E Gear LB640s before? Uh, I have, yeah. And uh, it's not, I mean, it's not the best experience uh, to be had in a Lamborghini, to be honest. I mean, like. <laughs> Paul Wallace will be fighting you I right mean, now. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Paul. But uh, yeah, they're, they're jerky, and uh, some say that it has character, but admittedly, it's. Um, it wasn't the finest uh, transmission setup. I think once ever you're developed. <laughs> once you're up and running, then you're good. Yeah, exactly. It's like it, but it's it's the slow speed stuff, which is not exactly. ideal. This, firstly, it's transporting me to I think a slightly different era. Like I feel, I feel like this is more of a seventies Lambo. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, like this cruising along. Apart from the really odd driving position, this is this is all right. I could do this. Very nice shifting mechanism. Yeah, yeah, they are good. I mean, in my opinion, the manual transmission like really changes this car for the better. Um, and, Could and you really go enjoyable. as far as saying it's now a GT Cruiser? <laughs> Maybe not that far, sure, but like okay. we're, we're slowly but surely uh, we're going into that direction with this car for sure. Yeah. But it's much more usable than you might think. I mean, it's much less intimidating even on the smaller, more narrow stuff, which. Admittedly, like the, the E gear cars, they still scare you on smaller roads because they're bouncing around everywhere uh, and jolting around. But this car is actually, it's quite docile. Yeah, I, I would actually say it, it's sort of, it's easier to drive this manual than, okay, as I say, I'm only referencing the SV, which is gonna be more aggressive anyway, because you can control everything a lot more. It immediately feels like I'm, I think, more in control of the car. Like we haven't gone beyond 3000 RPM yeah, so let's see what happens when we rev it out. Yeah, but that's where the magic happens. I'm sure. sure, but actually, yeah, it's it's a really pleasantly, surprisingly chilled experience so far, except the huge V12. For sure. Yeah, I mean, if you consider the fact that, like, you know, it's a 6.5 liter Bizzarini V12 back there, um, 640 horsepower, obviously, 660 newton meters, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, I mean, you'd think that it's a complete animal, which it is if you like really go up the rev range and, sure. uh, and ring it out. But like doing this kind of stuff, it actually manages it's, quite yeah, well, yeah. It's fine, it's absolutely fine. Now, I think I may be misquoted when I was introducing this car. I, I said like one of 50, but maybe it's a bit more than that, huh? Maybe one of 100 worldwide. So I mean, uh, you know, Ed Bolian and John Tamarian from We Are Curated have done quite a lot of work um, already on, on really gathering all the info on, on the rarity of these cars. So I think the US spec cars are 26 in total or 27, okay. somewhere around there. Um, and maybe the same amount for the rest of the world. So let's say uh, Europe, Middle East, Asia, etc. So I think we're looking at yeah, just over 50 in total worldwide, maybe. Oh, Definitely okay. under 100. Sure. Still a super rare car. So it's not quite as rare as the Super Leger, and we'll come on to that when we get in that car, but right. it is rare. Okay, we're now starting to... Oh my God. Oh, I, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's the terrifying part again. Because you know what? Firstly, that's quick. I shifted at four and a half thousand up here. We've got a long way to go. I mean, this thing does over 60 miles an hour in first gear. Oh, good lord. <laughs> so. Okay, well now you've just ruined my uh, my vid. Like, people want know when I get into second gear, we're already going to go. <laughs> <laughs> but it's when it picks up, it's such, it's a jet fighter. I mean, you just feel like suddenly you are on your way to God knows where, the moon, I suppose. Yeah, it's that wave of torque. Like, I mean, these V12s really are amazing. And like, it's still like, it gives you such a special feeling while driving. The induction noise, like, it's great. That's what you said before we got in. Yeah, it was like, wait till you hear the induction noise. I was like, I don't want to hear the V12, I just want to hear the exhaust. <laughs> but, Having to then shift gear was different. So when we were cruising around, I was like, oh, this is lovely. Like, I feel like I'm in a GT3 Touring, just in a big Lambo's vibe. But then when you start cracking on, then having to go, oh my God, where's the... That was a bit more intense than I thought it was going to be. Right. The E-gear, you're like, off we go. Exactly. So, oh, okay, I want to do a bit more fast stuff. <laughs> now, I have to say, both these cars are fairly low mileage. They're very well looked after examples because they're so rare. So it's incredible that we're getting the chance to film with them and to drive them. Also being a tiny bit respectful because of that they don't get taken out that often so you know we've been warming up this car for a while and I'm just keeping an eye on where that needle goes
I'm kind of pooing myself, but here we go. You kind of got to hold on for dear life a bit, don't you? Just a normal car coming the other way, and I was immediately thinking, how big is this thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, good brakes, thank God! <laughs> wow, wow, Ooh, you were. Oh, there's a tractor coming down the hill. We're not being lucky with our traffic today, but a bit of a chicane. Oh, this thing is very enjoyable. I haven't got time to start thinking about healing and towing. There's too much, too much going through my mind at the moment. We're, we're being quite uh, brutal with the gear shifts, but I'll live with it for now. Oh, and then, oh, down we go. Yes, come on! almost that sort of moment isn't it that old school Lambo era and then the Audi for sure it's like the perfect amalgamation between the both of them it's right on that cusp yeah. and then this manual gearbox I say I, I definitely think I think I should have a mustache and maybe like a shirt that's <laughs> like a really unbuttoned chain. and a gold chain <laughs> like it's got something about that it's to got it, that it? Kuntash vibe to it, it for does. sure like it doesn't lose that personality but in a way, it's still like elegant and, and usable as well, like as we discussed earlier. Um, but yeah, so well like now we're back up in here again. It's just like, yeah, it's totally fine, but it's it's a manly car. I'm not sure I'm manly enough to put it on. <laughs> I've got to be honest, but way more enjoyable than I, I thought it was going to be intimidating, too much power, too much going on. And, and maybe once you get to grips with it, that would be the case. Right. Maybe there'd be a bit too much. Maybe the ear gear would suit it, but actually, it's brilliant with this. Very different immediately. I feel like this car is tiny. Right? Yeah. It's so funny. It's the baby Lambo. It's the baby Lambo. Now let me uh, let me tell you a story. So yeah, maybe a year, a year and a half ago, I just suddenly sort of thought, oh, I think I want to buy a Lamborghini. And and <laughs> the one that I wanted to buy was the Mark One Garda Superleggera. For me, it just it ticks so many boxes. It's the era that I love. I think the shape is kind of iconic. It's, I think, representing great value for money in the UK. 100%. Like sub 100K, lightweight, track focused, all the bits that I wanted. Definitely. So I went to drive one. I was a tiny bit disappointed. Oh. <laughs> so a lot of my audience are like, what's so, happening? Why aren't you buying a Superleggera? Well, I haven't really talked about it that much. It's, it's, it's cool, but I was a bit like, it's not as good as you think yes, it will be, right? Yeah. That I, I really wanted it to be amazing and it was just really good. Right. <laughs> However, today, we're in a car with a manual gearbox. Very special car. And I worry that suddenly I'm going to walk away going, I really want to go on a Super <laughs> Um But I think it'll be quite hard to find one because, as we discussed, 10. 10 of these ten ever wide. made. Very rare car. A lot of people actually don't even know that this car exists. I mean, like... I, I didn't know it existed until you posted it on Instagram. I had no idea. Then obviously I saw that photo and I was like, I'm coming. <laughs> I, I need to experience this. Oh, and there goes a bus. We have not done well with buses today on, no, on the roads that we want to drive. it's been super busy out here, It's been yeah. super busy. But that gives us two more seconds just to talk about this car. So yeah, basically this was the first time Lamborghini, I guess, followed the sort of Ferrari or the Porsche mold of stripping their cars out, making these kind of, you know, track focused road cars. We saw it with the 3RS and we'd seen it with the Challenge to Darling, stuff like that. And then here came Garda Superleggera. And then, you know, still got a four wheel drive system. So the car is inherently less sort of edgy than those other two. Precisely, yeah. But it's Lambo and it's Lambo Flair. And I did find with the E-Gear car that like, you know, E-Gear Mercer Lagos, once you get up and go, it's rah! But it just left me a little bit cold. True, I do, I do follow that 100%. So this, let's see. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully it's going to, uh, yeah, it changed that up for us. Anyway, we're going to let things warm up slightly. So we'll just light with the LP640, potter down the road to start with and see what this car's like at a sort of cruising level uh, before we then wake up that V10, which, look, don't get me wrong, I love a V12, but I actually think this car sounds better. It sounds so much better. Like from on stock. stock. Like from stock, this car sounds great from the outside. That's exactly it. And the 640's quiet. It, you know what we sort of realised since we got out of the LP640, it's quite a smooth and lethargic V12 in that car. It is. It well, is. this Long is a bit more smooth, 
This would be more boom, boom. Exactly, yeah. this is the punchy one. <laughs> this is the punchy one. Um, but yeah, that immediately I love the, the size, the look, the feel in here, the, the design, the layout, everything about it. And oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's the best sound on the car. Like just hearing metal on metal, like it's, it's special. Clickety clank. But my thinking is for this car, way more than the LB640, whilst I might enjoy the manual gearbox, is it going to suit the characteristics because it makes this car a bit more sort of a bit more of a touring spec you said that before we started filming and it does yeah surprisingly so i mean like the, the whole aggression of the e-gear is kind of gone like and in a way it does give it a character or more character uh to have the e-gear on this car um so you're right yeah it's, yeah. it's an interesting one because sure. it's like challenge tradali i've long said i would never convert a Challenge Tradali to manual. For me, it suits having that F1 gearbox. Yeah. It's part of the car's identity. I, I totally agree. Yeah. And I wonder with this whether that's the same thing. Like, I'm I'm gonna enjoy this experience because I just, I like manual shifting. But, but let's see, anyway, we'll spin around now. Oh, as oh as the bus is doing exactly the same, same. thing. I mean, if only I was a good driver, I could pull a J-turn yeah, yeah, and get out in front of him. Little J-turn. Let's see, he's Maybe taking a while. Can, I'm yeah, gonna do it. I'm gonna be really cheeky. Get ahead of him. Yeah, yeah. come on because he's going to do like a 17 nice. point turn. He's giving me a very aggro look, like, what are you doing? Mm. Are you... No, 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 no. He's looking at me again. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. What a legend. <laughs> People are legend style. They're so nice, aren't they? <laughs> um, okay, so yes, yeah, so I can see the temps have now risen up on their little dial. So as soon as we get out of town, we'll just do a short, short burst in this car. A bit of a shorter experience in this one, mainly because I feel like I'm a bit more familiar with Yeah, you've driven this it. car before, like. And, well, LP640 was just so eye-opening that I'm like, just kind of want to get back and do some more things with that. Anyway, uh, we'll crack off for now. That clank is nice. A lot more sound, like the car is just more nimble, it's on its feet. It's much easier to drive on these kind of roads with the manual gearbox. The, the 640 was definitely intimidating on the on the twistier stuff. Well, this you inherently feel more dialed in. Oh, I, I, okay, very good. <laughs> very good. I will say though, the car just, it's just not that urgent. I know it sounds like a really spoiled thing to say to be like, oh, yeah. this Lamborghini is quite slow, Yannick, but like... It's... Yeah, like, they, they both are, I mean, like, they're not as crazy as they think, as you think they would be, you know? Like, it's it's not the crazy brute that you might think it is. No! Can we do one more run? Yes, please. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really, like, nice and good, but I just always in my head think it's going to be insane, but it's, uh, it's very sort of manageable for sure. pace. Um, yeah, I mean, if you compare it to Challenge for Dolly, like that car is crazy. Well, there like, you it's go. Nuts. I think it's the four wheel drive system. Oh, that was yeah. nice going through there. Though. It's that it's that classic Vita. But it just there's just something in me which just wants a bit more. I don't know. Yeah, like if you compare it to the Scuderia, which obviously was its direct rival back in the day. Of course. I mean, like there's no comparison. No. That car feels razor sharp. Like you can hear every little rock in the wheel wells as you're driving. It's like it's it's way more alive. It's way that's what it is. This just feels a little bit robotic, weirdly. This car. Yeah. And you want it to be because it's a Lamborghini and the way it looks and the way it sounds and everything you think the car is gonna be you want it just to be manic and it's it's just kind of nice it's really nice and oh there you go manual I mean it's manual cars it was gonna happen at some point today <laughs> so like we've done fairly well to last a couple of hours without a stall <laughs> um, but I would say this car suits the manual more than the L uh, no I would say the LP640 suits the manual more than this car yeah like I mean the thing is there you kind of have it's not the, the lightweight variant, so like it's it's more natural for that car to be a little bit more lethargic, whilst yes. this definitely should be the crazy brute. I, yeah, well, look, hey, thank you very much, because one of 10, super rare, but we'll leave it at that, I think. <laughs> yeah. I can't decide whether I would take a Superleggera with the manual or the E-gear, but I think I would definitely take the LP, oh, I don't know what I think. <laughs> I'm so confused, I keep sort of arguing both sides. I think basically it depends how you want to drive the cars. 
It depends what your driving style is. I always lean towards manuals. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, what an incredible experience. Yes, huge thanks to Yannick for arranging this. If you want to follow what he gets up to, because he does experience and is around some other insane cars, go follow him on Instagram, say Gasoline Culture. Put a link to that below. But yeah, I mean, pretty outrageous day here in Liechtenstein. I probably shouldn't be opening a professional car wash anytime soon, but that was long overdue. The car picked up so much filth, especially during the quite wet and cold drive from Italy up here to Liechtenstein. Uh, anyway, what an amazing morning. I'm now actually headed to Geneva. It's another four or five hour drive ahead of me. I kind of wanted the car to be clean in Geneva. I feel like it would have been judged if it was filthy, even though I quite like dirty sports slash supercars. Uh, I have to say, as cool as both of those Lambos were, Easily got back into this six speed gated manual car. Went all lovely. The exhaust gargles! Don't think it's got any cup holders. 